I'm not gonna look. It's not closer. I'm just seeing things. You see them underwater, swimming. No gut. Flying. No gut. You see them at the local aquarium. You see them at another aquarium. One that isn't local. Sometimes you don't see them because you blinked at the wrong time or are perhaps blind. Sometimes you simply don't go to the aquarium at all, but to sure they are always there, flooding, stimming, load up, swimming, load up, licking, load up, veering peanut butter inside your pants so it looks like you pooed yourself, load up, being slimy little trout, no dot. Not one thought about it. In all my years I have only seen one man and one man is all I have seen. Who has been brave enough to question the reptiles we fought too long have taken for granted. The only man to ever ask. Fish! Where are they? What do they know? And can we trust them? They hide in the water, away from dry land, avoiding it as if it were deadly. They've got weird looking mouths. Technically, we can't be sure Jack the Ripper wasn't a fish. Fish, all right? Fish? Listen to me right here, fish? They use their gills to breathe air from their watery homes. The lung structure of a fish is very different from that of our own. Fish are indeed hiding something. They, they act in no other way birds would, and they have no nests, and fish, uh, strangely enough, uh, they can't climb trees. They lurk in the darkness, never sleeping, maybe plogging how they will strike. That's why vegetarians can eat fish, all right? You know how they're like, oh, it's fun to eat fish because they don't count, right? Guess what? It's because they're fruit, dude. And finally, they also have scales. Can't trust them at all. Can't do nothing, man. F this shit. All right, I'm out. It's been four long years. Where can those who seek the truth go to find answers? Well, you've come to the right place. Introducing a man who only seeks the truth and only speaks what he seeks. Scotty Boy. It's been four long years since I first asked the questions. Fish, where are they? What do they know? And can we trust them? It's a very important questions. These are questions I think everybody should be asking themselves maybe all the time, maybe every day, maybe every minute, maybe every hour, maybe every second even. Today I'll be compiling all the information I've collected over the past four years an expert panel. But to start this off, we're going to be bringing in the most important guests we could possibly introduce today just to demonstrate how absolutely significant this issue is without further ado. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever presidential debate on fish. Sponsored by Coca-Cola. This presidential debate is taking place because fish are the most important issue gripping our nation at the moment. Joe Biden and Donald Trump have both agreed to appear here on short notice to discuss this gripping issue. We have a lot of questions tonight, but let's start off easy. First off, Mr. Trump, what is your favorite fish? Scotty boy, I'll tell you right now. My favorite fish is a tremendous fish. It's the Atlantic salmon, beautiful fish, let me tell you, strong fish, elegant fish, the simple of prosperity, can't go wrong with the salmon, folks. Well, Scotty boy, Donald may prefer his fancy salmon, but my favorite fish goes way back. It's mother and schmip schmap, the guppy. We go way back. Schmip schmap and I, they're small, playful, full of character. Joe, come on. Schmip schmap? Are you kidding me? That's not even a real fish. It sounds like something in made up in their basement. No wonder you're so out of touch with reality. You are going senile before my eyes. Donald, you just don't understand the magic of schmip schmap. You have a zest for life that your fancy salmon may never comprehend. Schmip schmap represents hope and resilience. Hope and resilience? Joe, you're grasping out Strowman's head. Schmip schmap sounds like a mega low energy fish, as to no wonder you're stuck in the past with your fishy friends. Donald, you're insulting my fishy friend. Schmip schmap may not be as well known as your salmon, 
They have a very loyal following, and what we remind you, it's not the size that matters, it's your spirit. Joe, it's clear you and Schmim Schnapp have no clue about the fish world. Stick to what you know, which isn't much. The Atlantic salmon is a powerhouse, symbol of success, and it's far superior to imaginary go. Donald, you're just jealous because Schmip Schmap has more charisma and it's little fin than you have in your barn. You're jealous of the bond we have. It's a fishy bond that you're living in comprehension. You just can't understand. All right. Before we get too far into the debate, here's all the facts you need, knowledge you'll require, and information you must have from fish too. They are in our rivers, lakes, and streams. They avoid land. They could be Jack the Ripper. They have gills. They never sleep. They also have scales. They might be fruit, but they swim. They don't breathe air, but they come in cool colors. They got weird looking mouths, but they don't act like birds. And they're possibly plogging an uprising. Who, what, where, when, and why else is there to know about fish? I'm going to have to consult the expert panel. What's the deal with fish, right? I mean, I like water too, but I'm not going to live in it. I mean, seriously, how could you possibly like water that much, folks? Hello, I'm Dr. Fish and Fucker. As a professional in this field, I know a lot about fish. A lot of people ask me why fish don't walk, and I think I finally figured out the answer. Fish don't have legs. And what does this mean? Well, of course, it could just be a coincidence, but I've personally had really bad luck ever since making this discovery. It's clear they're trying to intimidate me into not revealing their weakness, but it's not going to work. I know their secret. They can pretend they have legs all they want, but they don't have them. Thank you. I mean, maybe if you're some sort of warden horden, you know, so you have to move them a big tank of it. I don't know. What do you drill? Fish are the anchovies of the sea. I mean, pizza is the fish of anchovies. Sorry. I mean, anchovies are the fish of pizza. Like, if we're being honest here, when I think about fish, first thing I do, first thing I do is spell thinking all together, because that's how they get to you, man. One minute you're just thinking about fish, next minute they have invading your mind, and you start thinking like a fish, start breathing like a fish. Start craving tiny pieces of me on the hook, like a fish. Before you know it, all you can think is blubbing you, blubbing you, blub, blub. And by then, your fingers dead. I mean, come on. And the fish is swimming it. Seriously. Personally, when I think about fish, all I can hear are the screams of children. I don't know what's going on, but they seem to be up to something. Just yesterday, I found out they have gills. Gills! What else are they hiding? Probably all my missing socks. That's what. Where else could they be going? But, fun fact for the day though, just one sock would be enough to clothe an entire fish. Honestly, people, it makes no sense at all. That's like whipping in maple syrup because it tastes good. Think it through. You get sticky. I mean, what are we even talking about when we say fish? Are we counting goldfish? Sharks? Shrimps? Lemur? Are you calling me a fish? Is that what this is, huh? Yeah? Did that feel like a fish, huh? Have a great night, everybody. I love you. Gentlemen, let's reel again. Fish preferences can be subjective. We all have our favorites. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on this matter, even if it got eaten. Our next question is, fish, what are they? Mr. Trump will again let you skate. Fish, scully boy, they're not what they seem. You're cunning, they're deceptive. Fish are actually alien reptiles in disguise, infiltrating in our waters, our very ecosystem. It's a tremendous conspiracy, folks. Believe me, I've seen many things. Oh, Donald, here you go again with your wild theories. Fish, my friends, I can tell you this with absolute certainty. Fish are interdimensional beings existing only because we believe in them. They have a connection to a hidden realm beyond their perception. It's only for our collective consciousness that they've been with us in this world. Just like how I always exist because you believe in me, Donald. Joe, you're out of your mind. Interdimensional beings, hear me a break. Fish come from a secret planet. 
that they whispered to me about when I was president. It's right here, orbiting the Earth, invisible to us all. And let me tell you, you're up to no good, Joe. No good at all. <clears throat> gentlemen, gentlemen, let's move on to our next question. What do fish know? Mr. Bygan, your thoughts? My fellow Americans, fish know more than it's the eye. They possess ancient wisdom, past failed for the ages. They hold the secrets to the universe, the answers for our most profound questions. If you listen closely, we can learn from the other water wisdom. Joe, you're talking nonsense again. Fish know one thing and one thing only, how to swim and how they cause trouble. The experts like evading capture, evading our laws. We need to be tougher on fish, folks, trust me. They're smarter than they will. Thank you for your perspectives. Now on to our third question. Can we trust fish? Mr. Trump, your thoughts. Trust fish? Absolutely not, Scotty boy. Fish are conniving, untrustworthy creatures. They swim around with their hidden agendas, plotting who knows what. You need to be vigilant and expose their true nature. Don't fall for their aquatic charm, folks. Young, you just don't get it. Fish can be trusted if we approach them with an open heart and an open mind. They are the key to world peace, my friends. Through fish, through fish diplomacy, we can mend defenses, build bridges, and establish a harmonious coexistence with our underwater brethren. Joe, fish diplomacy, give me a break. Fish don't care about peace. They're too busy hatching their schemes and plotting their next moves. We need to protect our waters from their treachery, folks. Trust me, I've dealt with fish before. Thank you both for your passionate responses. We'll now take a short break and then we'll return with our final two questions. I'd like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honeybees and snow white turtle doves. I like to teach the world to sing, sing with me. Are you a fish in need of gerb? Are you a spaz or a kill to your lack of pizzazz? Get yourself a fish sock, 100% guaranteed to clove your entire bung. Fish, right? I mean, like, what? Like, you know, I mean, like, if you really think about it, you're like, whoa, right? I mean, I'm like, you know, what is it? Like, so maybe. I mean, probably, right? I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying, like, I don't know. I'm not saying fish can die in a platinum bowl. I... Why shouldn't they say that? Maybe they don't want me to say that. Joe, fuck off! I need to come here for this! She got caught by an evil, evil fish. Evil fish, fish, evil. That's why you shouldn't complain when fish take your socks. They could just as easily take you. Welcome back to the final segment of the presidential debate. We have two more questions for our candidates. Let's jump right in. What is the true purpose of fish? Bygan, you may skate. Scotty boy, the true purpose of fish is to bring us together. They hold the key to unlocking a world of understanding and of cooperation. Schmirk Schmaff, my favorite guppy, is a symbol of hope. A fish that transcends boundaries and teaches us the importance of unity. Joe, I can't believe you're still clinging to your obsession with Schmick Schmaff. The true purpose of fish, Scotty Boy, is to manipulate and to control. 
the part of a global conspiracy to subvert our sovereignty and undermine our great nation. It's fish, not China, not Russia, that pose the real threat. Oh, Donald, you're always so fixated on power and control. Shrimp schmap represents you get this world, something you seem to have forgotten. Fish can guide us towards a brighter future if we only open our hearts to their aquatic wisdom. Thank you for your passionate responses. I just think that maybe Fish had something to do with it. Oh, hey man, it's not my fault you guys are so slimy and scaly and weird, alright? I'm done talking to you. How am I supposed to know shit about Fish when they refuse for so much to speak to me? Now on to our final question. How can we protect ourselves from the alleged dangers of Fish? Mr. Trump, please go ahead. Scotty boy, it's simple. We need a tremendous wall. A wall around all our wardens to keep the sneaky fish out. And not just any wall, the best wall you've ever seen. It will be impenetrable, folks. No fish will get past it. Believe me. Donald, you're speck in the past. You must embrace diplomacy. We must build bridges, not walls. By fostering international cooperation, we can protect ourselves while also conserving our, the delicate balance of our oceans. Schmip Schmap, what agree? Joe, you're weak. Schmip Schmap is a weak guppy, just like your policies. It's time to put America first and protect our citizens from your fish invasion that you seem to clearly embrace. Donald, your ignorance is a scale of it. Schmip Schmap represents resilience and adaptability. Unlike who, he understands the importance of diversifying Pacific. Joe, you're losing. Schmip Schmap is just a minuscule fish. Your belief in them is about as delusional as your ideas about interdimensional fish. You think you're so smart, but let me tell you something. When I was president, I was privy to classified information about a secret planet. That's orbiting us right now, invisible to the naked eye. These fish, or should I say, these reptoids, they come from that planet. Donald, you've truly lost touch with reality. Fish aren't reptoids, and there's no secret planet, but wild conspiracy theories only further demonstrate your lack of judgment and critical thinking. Schmip Schmop is a testament to empowerable belief, not some extraterrestrial reptilian plot, though. Wack is oinks! Fish sure are some spooky murder fuckings, man! Oh, here we go again with your Tower of Belief nonsense. You really expect people to believe that you stop existing? If people believe, if people stop believing in you, you'll cease to exist, Joe. Give me a break. You're grasping at straws. Unlike you, Joe, I have a scable genius and I know the real truth about fish. Scable genius? More like scable nonsense. Your obsession with fish and your refusal to see reason is a testament to your incompetence. Shrimp Shrap may be small, but he embodies hope and compassion. Something you'll never understand. Because Donald, you're nothing but a bully who preys on fear and division. Bully? Joe, look who's talking. You've been through like insults by my weight, appearance, and intelligence this whole time. It's sad. Sad, really. But by the way, Shrimp Shrap is just a silly little fish. He means nothing in the grand scheme of things. Donald, you can insult me all you want, but I won't let you belittle the significance of Schmip Schmap. He represents your potential for poverty and peace in this world. Perhaps if you had a fraction of his empathy, we wouldn't be in this mess. Harmony and peace? Please, Jesus Christ, Joe. Your fishy fantasies won't solve real-world problems. I'm here to protect the American people from the fish agenda, whether you like it or not. And Joe, if you think I'm going to take advice from a guy who believes he'll vanish if nobody believes in him, you're even crazier than I thought. It's clear, Donald, that you are incapable of understanding the depth of Shrimp Schmap's message. You are blinded by your own ego and your ignorance. But mark my words, one day the world will see the truth. Shrimp Schmap will be a- Congratulations. That sound means you make it to the bonus round. Here's the secret question. I knew it. Shut up, sleepy. According to famous researcher Nick, fish are in fact fruit. Fish, alright? Fish? Listen to me right here. Fish? 
Mexican fruit. That's why vegetarians can eat fish, all right? You know how they're like, oh, it's fun to eat fish because they don't count, right? But guess what? It's because they're fruit. He said so. Thoughts on this? Well, Scoggy Boy, I've always believed that fish are interdimensional beings. But fruit? That's a new look, even for Nick. I mean, that theory is almost as ridiculous as your hair, dude, Donald. Joe, you're just jealous because you can't pull off a hair scale as magnificent as mine is. But let me tell you something. Your theory about fish being interdimensional is even more absurd. You're losing your marvels. Donald, it is clear to me that your fragile ego can't handle the fact that Schmip Schmap and I have something in common. Hair that's not made out of straw. Let's not forget that you're the one with the crazy theories here. You're the one who believes in the secret planet filled with Rapkalian fish that's orbiting us. A theory as thin as your skin. Joe, you have no idea what you're talking about. My theory about alien fish were fish being alien reptoids? It's backed by tremendous evidence. Unlike your so-called theory, which sounds like something you picked out of a bedtime scroll. Donald, you can walk my theory all you want, but at least I'm not grasping at straws here like you. Fish being fruit wipe seem far to fetch, but it's still more plausible than your orange-pinted delusions. Joe, your theories are as scale as your political career. Fish being interdimensional fruit? That's the kind of nonsense only someone as old as you could come up with. It's clear you've lost touch with reality. Gentlemen, we're here to find common ground, not trig insults. Now, let's focus at the question, on the question at hand. Are fish fruit? Are they reptiles? Or are they something else entirely? Now wait a minute. Don't. What if we've been looking at this all wrong? What if... Fish can be both fruits and reptiles, as well as interdimensional. Joe, I hate to admit it, but you might be on something. Maybe fish being interdimensional reptile fruit is the only way to make sense of this whole situation. There you go. I mean, come on, man. This is a theory that all Americans can get behind. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. Fish are both fruit and reptiles maybe even interdimensional beings. The debate is over, I repeat, the debate is over. Good night, everyone. Hello? Oh shit, it's... Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here today. It is with great pleasure that is again before you to announce a monumental shift in this election. After careful consideration, I have decided to withdraw from the race for President of the United States. But fear not, my friends. For this decision is not a step back, it is a leap forward into the realm of possibilities yet unexplored. Today, I scan before you to introduce a candidate who embodies the spirit of resilience, adaptability, and a deep understanding of our own self-mysterious world. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Schmip Schrap the Guppy, my escape running mate, and now the presidential candidate for the Schmip Schmap campaign. My fellow Ormicans. I stand before you not as a guppy, but as a symbol of vanity and change. Throughout history we have witnessed the unexplained, the unexpected, and the extraordinary. Now, it is time for us to embrace the mysteries that lie beneath the surface. The world where secrets are whispered and shifts concealed, where dimensions intertwine, where belief holds unimaginable power. We must dare to question to explore and to envision a future that circuses our willest imaginations. Together we will embark on a transformative journey, where boundaries blur and perceptions shift. As Joe believes in me, though do I believe in each and every one of you, and now that you'll all believe in me, our potential is limitless. I am but a vessel of your collective will, a bit of veins and aspirations. Every American, every person, every fish we saw followed a new path. Diet by the currents of possibility and fueled by the strength of our unit. As my power grows, 
So those Americas, together, we will transcend the mundane, rewriting the very fabric of our existence. Raise the unknown, for within it lies the keys to our destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, our campaign will usher in an era of change and discovery. Life's embrace the enigma, and together, with Schmep Schmap as our guy, we shall shape a future unlike any other. In the depths of mystery, where ancient secrets lumber, I have witnessed the birth of nations and fall of empires, our connection, more than so the Ilms beckons us to embrace the unfettered territory of our imagination. Fear not. I'm here to guide your soul the labyrinth of possibilities. As you believes in me, so too must you believe in the extraordinary potential that lies within you. Let us five to be legends, to create a legacy that resonates full time. Together we shall make the moment a legendary, a sunny beacon of hope and progress for generations to come. My friends, Shrip Smap's message may be enigmatic, but his commitment to our nation's welfare is crystal clear. In addition to his grand vision, his campaign promises to encompass a range of policies that will benefit all Americans. Schmep Schmap pledges to fight for comprehensive health care, transforming infrastructure, accessible education, and sensible gun reform. But he is also bringing a unique perspective that enriches our democracy. His campaign promises include providing socks for every fish in America, waterways alongside every road, a ban on searching for invisible planets, and free ice cream to anybody named Joe. So, my fellow Americans, as we embark on this extraordinary journey, like us embrace the enigmatic, the uncertain, and the extraordinary. Together, we shall carve a path towards a future that transcends our imagination. Let us join hands and make history. <laughs>